Hi there, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do some easy stencil techniques with brand new Pink Fresh Studio February 2022 products. There are brand new stencils, stamps, dies, and foil plates in this release and we're going to try out several of them. We have a blue theme going on today. We're going to be using a couple of my favorite blue and teal color combinations of Pink Fresh Studio inks, in addition to some previously released products paired with these brand new goodies. First up, I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of sea glass cardstock that I am going to stencil with the botanicals and butterflies stencils, part of the brand new release. This is a four piece stencil. We're going to start with the first stencil here and use some Ocean Breeze Pink Fresh Studio inks applied to the blue cardstock. If you have never tried stenciling on a colored cardstock, I highly recommend giving it a try as it gives you a completely different look and effect than white cardstock. After we have inked up this first layer, I actually pulled the stencil back and I'm going to take a little aquamarine ink and blend it just into parts of the leaves for this uh, botanicals and butterflies design. Not completely going over the ocean breeze, just adding a bit darker ink into some of the areas. Now, while there is a, I believe a stamp set that goes with this, I want to say, uh, I don't want to tell you wrong. Um, I am only using the stencils today. Finally, we're going to take some Mermaid Cove ink and we're going to ink up the second stencil in this set, which is going to be my darkest teal color. This is also going to apply some of the greenery to the butterflies in this design. I believe this is a cling stamp, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have this, so I did not use it for my design today. And I wanted to show you how you don't have to have all of the products to create amazing cards. Next up, we are going to ink up the blue portion of the next stencil design using the Slumber Pink Fresh Studio ink. That's going to be like some of the little florals and things on our branch as well as some of the detail on our butterfly. And we're going to take stencil four and this is going to be the deepest, darkest color. And we're going to ink this up with Blue Jay. Now, one of my favorite things to do is to actually take a clear glitter paste of some sort with a stencil design and a spe any stencil design really, but it's a fun technique when you have layering stencils and ink up portions of the design with glitter paste, not the entire thing. So I'm actually going to leave stencil four in place. I'm going to remove as much ink as possible from the stencil with a dry microfiber cloth. And I'm going to take some Hero Arts clear glitter paste and apply this over the design. Now, I originally grabbed a paste that was just a clear paste, and that would give a glossy finish, which is also really nice, but I decided I really wanted to use a glitter paste, and this new Hero Arts glitter paste is my favorite. I'm only going to grab a tiny little bit and apply it with a path palette knife. And the reason I'm only using a little bit is if it does pick up some of the ink either left over on the stencil or from the ink underneath, it's going to change the color of the glitter paste and I don't want to put that back in the jar. So I try to use as little amount of paste as possible. And then you want to clean your stencil and your palette knife immediately. When this is dry, you are left with a beautiful glittery finish. Next up, we are going to use the foil plate for songbirds on branches. This is a cling stamp. There's a foil plate, stencils, and a die. All the good stuff, you guys. So I foiled the design on Hammer Mill 100 pound weight smooth cardstock with gold foil using the Spellbinders Glimmer hot foil machine. Once I foiled this, 
I am, you can take the solid Pink Fresh Studio plate and foil the solid design. I'm going to do that off camera. And then I did stencil this with the stencils that go with this. I am so sorry that I missed catching that on camera, you guys. Um, no idea what happened there. We are using all the same color of stencils, so just keep that in mind. It's a layering stencil set, and we are the foil will resist the ink, and we're left with a beautiful design. Next, I am taking the Delicate Floral Print Stencils. This is a four-piece set again, and we are starting with the sky blue color of ink for the base of our florals, and then we're going to use Ocean Breeze and Aquamarine for the leaves, and then for the other shade of blue on these florals, we're going to use Slumber. This is going to be a little bit lighter than anything else today. Definitely have a blue theme going on. I was feeling the blue colors, I guess. There is our ocean breeze. And then we're going to take stencil number three, which is going to be our layering stencil for our flower. And again, this is the slumber color of ink. I love the slumber color of ink. As this dries, it is going to fade just a tiny little bit and smooth out. These are dye inks. And then finally, stencil four is going to be our layering stencil for the leaves, which we will use aquamarine for. Now, just like the first stencil, so for our birds and botanicals, I did not apply glitter paste. That was simply stenciling that foil design. The, we are going to use glitter paste for this again. We're going to use it on that uh, layering stencil for the flower. So like the flower cent centers and accents, we are going to just kind of wipe off that stencil much like we did with the first one. I'm going to line this back up and then we will apply the glitter hero paste through here and let it dry. One great thing about most glitter paste that I have used, whether it's deco foil or Simon Says Stamp, which is also deco foil, or the Hero paste or Lawn Fawn paste, it dries pretty quickly, especially if you do a nice thin coat, which I am applying a nice thin coat to this. Again, I used very minimal paste because I don't want to put this back in the jar and I want to get all of the areas and then I want to wash this immediately, but it's going to leave us with beautiful glittery flower centers. I love the little bit of glitter. I've now taken the coordinating die for that first background that we created. Again, this is botanicals and butterflies. Look how beautiful this is. Remember, we did stencil this on sea glass cardstock, so it's on a blue cardstock base to begin with. And then we're going to take the coordinating die for songbirds and branches. I think I maybe called that the wrong thing earlier. And this is the one that we foiled. So we've got four little pieces for that. And then our last background we're leaving as is. So now that we have our components, it's time to build our backgrounds. I'm going to take the previously released diamond plaid background and we are going to ink up a blue on blue background on a fog gray back cardstock. So this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. And I should mention that last background that we created with delicate floral print was stenciled on Lawn Fawn fog gray cardstock, which is a nice light gray. It's the same light gray we're using here. So we are going to use the sky blue color first with the first layer of our plaid background. And I am going to go in and add a little bit darker area in some of this with the slumber ink. So it's more of an ombre effect. Then we're going to take the second stencil, layer this over the top, and starting with Slumber, 
we're going to stencil the second layer which is gonna be a little bit more of a detailed layer for this background. And we are gonna finish by taking Blue Jay along the bottom. So where we applied some of the slumber before with the first stencil, now we're going to add Blue Jay just to keep with that ombre effect. So our plaid background is more of an ombre plaid. And again, this is on Lawn Fawn Fog Gray cardstock. So we already start with a base that is not a true white. Look at that, you guys. I love this stencil set so, so much. Okay, so I'm playing around with the different elements. Things are not going to be left exactly as you see here, but I got antsy and couldn't wait to try it out. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of cardstock, sea glass cardstock, pardon me now. That is what I stenciled that first set on. We are going to create another tone on tone background. So instead of the light gray, we're going to do a light blue. I'm starting with the sky blue ink again. We're going to go all over with sky blue ink. But this time, instead of using another ink color, we're going to use the sky blue ink again for the second layer. So we're gonna take the more detailed diamond plaid layer and we're going to simply take sky blue ink again and go over this stencil. So this is a much more tone on tone plaid design. It is not going to be near as in your face plaid, but be a little bit more subtle. Just a completely different way to use the same set. So pretty, I love it. And look how different they look. I love that. So I have all of my great elements. We've got all of our backgrounds. And now it's time to start putting it all together. First things first is I decided I wanted my backgrounds to be a little less perfect. Um, I didn't decide that until I had already glued down some of the elements for my card. So I took a Pink Fresh Studio Essentials Blanket Stitched Rectangle and I die cut it from vellum. This is going to be A2 sized and we're going to be taking our Songbirds on Branches images. These are the foiled images and we're going to be gluing them to the vellum layer. I think these are so delicate and pretty that they stand out better. Um, I like the plaid. I like something interesting going on in the background, but I almost felt like it was too much Vellum is the perfect answer always for this. If you guys have followed me for a while, you already know vellum is my best friend. I love vellum because if you love something, let's say it's a pattern paper or some sort of element on your card, but it just overpowers your embellishment, your sentiment, whatever it might be, try a little vellum because it almost always is the answer. So I'm gonna glue all these little pieces down to the vellum. And when I layer this over the background then, it mutes the background enough, but still adds an interesting background that isn't a solid cardstock. I really didn't want a solid cardstock today, and this is the perfect answer. Before I add everything to my backgrounds though, I am taking a little white gouache. I added one little squirt of water to it and I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I am going to tap splatters all over these panels. That's going to be both plaid panels as well as my delicate floral background and it just gives it a little bit of distressing. I don't want it to be overwhelming. I just want it to be, you know, that little bit of white splatter all over all three of these. And then I want them to completely dry. The great thing about gouache that I have found is I think it dries pretty quickly and my splatters are small. There's no big globs anywhere on here that might take a little bit longer to dry. So I let these air dry all of the way. And here are our backgrounds. So pretty. I am going to take a little foam adhesive and place it on the back of a sentiment strip I created. All of my sentiments today were stamped using the brand new Lily frame stamp set. So this is also a set that comes with an image and 
coordinating stencils and all of that good stuff, but I'm using the greetings from it today. So there is the die for the frame and then the die for the word friend and thanks, which I'm going to use, and then lots of great sentiments. And with the smaller little sentiment phrases, I use the Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Labels dies to die cut those. And then for the word friend, I stamped friend or thanks with gold embossing powder, or pardon me, clear embossing, clear embossing ink, heat embossed with gold embossing powder, and then die cut several additional words, stack them one on top of another to give it a little bit of dimension and adhered it to the card. For my next background, I this is again the botanicals and butterflies. I die cut one of the blanket stitched rectangles, but this one's a little bit smaller, so there's only going to be vellum in the center. And we're going to adhere it just like so with this branch. And then I'm going to add some butterflies around this as well as my sentiments. So all three cards feature really similar, similar sentiments. My sentiment phrases were all stamped with a blue ink. I either used Blue Jay or Slumber, depending on the card and what looked the best. I wanted to make sure that everything coordinated really nicely for each card where it wasn't like a bold black greeting. The only thing was like a little touch of gold on each. I love how that looks. There couldn't be a person with a more generous heart. Pinkfresh Studio does an amazing job with unique, I think, sentiments that you don't always see everywhere else. So here's an example of stamp stamping, adhering my die cuts one on top of another. Of course, the stamped and embossed one on top. And that just helps it stand out a little bit. I'm using some acrylic blocks to help hold that flat. And then the butterflies, because I didn't use the coordinating stamp set, I will draw in the antennae for my butterflies with a fine tip black pen. I'm gonna put small foam adhesive squares underneath the wings or underneath the butterflies, depending on the image, and glue down the center of the butterflies with liquid adhesive and pinch that or clamp that to my card with reverse tweezers to hold that in place while that glue is drying. And that's the tweezers right there. I only used three of the four butterflies that came in this set. And remember, there is a little bit of the hero glitter paste here on parts of the wings and parts of the little florals on the branch, which is so pretty. In real life, that glitter just adds an amazing finishing touch. Here's my black pen to draw in the antennae for my butterflies. And I love that the vellum is only in the center. Um, you get a lot more of the plaid for this card. Uh, just another way to use vellum on the design. This one will also be finished with a scattering of little clear heart accents. I always love little heart accents. These are the Lucy's Little Things Droplets Pool Hearts. And all of my cards feature these um, somewhere on the design. These are little triangle trays from Simon Says Stamp that I've uh, spilled out my hearts into. It's a great way to contain sequins, hearts, confetti, any of that good stuff while you're working. And then you can easily funnel it right back into your container or a bag or whatever you keep your little embellishments in. It's a really great way to just kind of contain them while you're working. And they come in a set of four. I absolutely love them. I'm adhering each of my background panels to a white top fold card base. There were a few little pieces of this background panel that hung off the edge and I did trim those off with my scissors. 
Okay, for our last background, which again is the delicate floral print, this background, there's no die cutting. It's just the delicate floral print. I again, I'm going to use greetings from the, sorry, I cannot remember everything's name, Lily Frame Set. So we have the thanks, we have it's the little things in life that touch our hearts the most. But I did go to my scrap stash of Pinkfresh Studio goodies from previous card projects and I have these great little small butterflies. They're the reverse foil from that. Um, I think I had like three left. I'm going to use two of them on my card. I thought they were a great little finishing touch and I always like to make mention I do save all these little bits and pieces and it's fantastic when I can use them up on a card design. We're going to add some little hearts to our card as well as some gemstones to the wings of the butterflies. I think we'll add about five hearts to this card, three kind of close down to the bottom around the sentiments and two up high. And then I like on the wings, especially since we're not going to be using like any stenciling. If you were using the outline of the butterfly, you could always stencil them if you wanted to. Um, these obviously are the reverse of that and they're solid gold, but I like to embellish little parts of the wings with some gemstones. Adds a fun little finishing touch and embellishment. And that is it. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these easy, easy stenciling techniques using brand new Pink Fresh Studio February 2022 release products. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. I want to give a big shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you'd like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link below in the description. Here is another video featuring Pink Fresh Studio products that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.